Okay, I am going to start uh, to explain about uh, using mocking in testing. Uh, this is about dancing with shadows, about stuff, mocks, and patch. Okay, I, we are going to explain why we need to use mockers. After that, how to use patch to uh, in, uh, to use our mockers in our testings. Uh, to a kind of simulators, tabs, and mocks, and libraries, uh, some libraries used specifically for mocking in web developers. Why testing? Uh, why using automated text and how to use fakers? Normally, uh, you know when you start to programming that code uh, doesn't work when you type it uh, because you need to to uh, test it even manually. But uh, when you see your uh, system grow and uh, uh, the complexity grows, you need to uh, put this automatically because you need to ensure that every part of your code is tested. So there are two basic uh, type of testing. One is integration test uh, that uh, try to test a whole feature in your uh, in your system. And after uh, there are unit tests that uh, just try to test specific functions. Okay, testing are used in both cases. Mocking are used in both cases. One case is when you want to isolate one part of your code to just test this piece of code, uh, trying to mock in uh, the, 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 all, the, all the classes or objects that are outside this. Other, other case is when you want to uh, try to uh, test a feature, but you don't have the special hardware or the special API that you need to test this, because you need sometimes something that is uh, very expensive or is in development or you don't have all the day uh, access to this and or you don't want to use this in, in every case <clears throat> you need to use automated testing so uh, one uh, important case to use mocking is in input output operation that they are usually costly and when you have some improbably events I think about, for example, when you want to uh, test uh, input output in a file system and you want to test if how you, your, your system works when the file system is full. You are not going to full hard disk uh, just to try this. Uh, you want some way to uh, simulate this, this, this kind of events. Okay. You can use mockers or uh, fakers, uh, fake, fake objects to uh, simulate functions, classes, objects, or even complete libraries, whole libraries. They should be predictable. So every, every time you uh, run the test, it should give you the same output, repeatable, fast. Because when you have uh, tests that take too much time, you tend to avoid uh, using them every every time, and they um, they, 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 um, they the the usability the, your the usability of the test uh, degrades. Uh, they need to be light cheap, lightweight and cheap. Okay. On patching, patching, what is patching? Patching is when you try to use this fake object instead of the real one, and you put this on your uh, test. Uh, there are, uh, I am going to talk about some common errors in patching, the scope, some trade-off, and uh, another, uh, how to avoid some of these trade-offs and have another. Uh, using inverse dependency patching. You need to be clear about what are you going with 
which object are you going to patch? You need to patch uh, the imported one into the namespace if uh, you are going to patch and not the original object. I, when this uh, very short example, this is going to be more clear. Uh, when we use b.py, we have in b.py, and we use, in one case, in the left, I have from a import class. And then you need to know that in the module b.py, in the namespace of this module, you have b. You, you have class, you have the, the name class, and then you need to patch in b.class because you have to patch this namespace, the namespace of the b model. In the right, you have import a. In this case, you need to patch the a.class because you, you are going to patch the namespace of the a class, uh, of the a model that is where, uh, uh, where you are using the, uh, the class uh, object. Okay. You, need, you can use uh, different um, scopes in the patching, uh, in the patching uh, operation. You can use decorators. Decorators are when you use um, the add uh, sign, and you can see you can uh, stack many decorators, and the decorators are injected as arguments inside the uh, testing function. Uh, in this case, you can see that uh, the uppermost are in the right side, and the down are in the left side, as you see uh, in the color. Uh, seeing the colors, the green, the, the uh, orange colors. You can also uh, use a patch uh, co with context managers. Context managers are when you uh, try uh, this uh, with, with patch, use a mock. Uh, the mock is uh, automatically created. Uh, the mock ob a mock object is automatically created. Uh, as in this class, in this class, I am going to explain uh, after this uh, this uh, about mock object, the proper the properties of mock object. Uh, you can see, you can uh, see, uh, you can uh, change the mock object, etc. Et uh, and after all, you can use also patch and start and end this uh, uh, patch, uh, change your code uh, at running time. So you need to use uh, wisely, sparsely. You don't, uh, need, uh, you don't have to use uh, a lot of patches, just, just the one you need. Okay, so summary. You can use class decorators, to patch objects, you can use function decorators to patch objects. You can use context managers, and then the patch is going to work just in, inside the context manager. And you can manual start and stop this. OK. There are some trade-offs when you patch. One of the things is that you are going to have your test Coupled strongly coupled with the uh, um, the model you are going to test because you need to go with all the paths and see where you are going to patch this specific option in this specific space namespace. So one thing is that you are going to need to maintain this. Another thing is that uh, uh, patching changes behavior during the uh, runtime. Of course, this is why we use uh, fake objects. Uh, this is why we use simulation, because you need to change. But uh, the, uh, always when you change your uh, the, the behavior in your runtime, you need to be very aware how you are doing this. 
and they can be uh, sometimes complex and expensive because sometimes you need to try uh, to find the real path to put this patch. One thing you can use instead of uh, patching is using dependency injections. When you use dependency injection, you just inject object classes needed uh, by a piece of code as an argument. So you can use direct replacement. In this very little sample, we have a, me uh, a stub method that just return uh, four uh, as legs in the animal. So when we use uh, the uh, dependency injection, we uh, put the class animal as an argument in the creation of the instance instead of using inheritance. So when you use inheritance as in left, we have a strongly couplet uh, the um, parent class with the inherited class. And when we, we use um, the class as an argument, we can see that we just can uh, pass uh, the, the class uh, that we are going to use the method as an argument. So it's easier when you need to uh, replace using just uh, in the instantation time, using stop animal and that's all. So you have a uh, stop animal and then you can uh, return for them and that's that's uh, that's all. Uh, you have this have also some trade off because you need to change your um, code to uh, use uh, inje uh, injection dependency. Injection dependency is a practice that gives you more flexibility and has another um, advantage uh, outside testing. Okay, I am going to explain about mocks. Mocks are a special kind of object that uh, Python give us in the standard library. We have uh, mocks and magic mocks. Magic mocks have uh, many of the magic uh, attributes, magic methods implemented. Uh, so you can say in magic mock, for example, uh, the length, and uh, they are going to uh, return zero uh, when you want to uh, see, for example, uh, the Boolean value, and you and they will return a true, for example. Uh, mocks can be customized so they um, act more like the real object. For example, you can change the return value. Uh, you have just the attributes uh, to the mock the uh, object. You say return value, and when you call the mock, the uh, mock will going to uh, return the desired value that you put in the attribute. You can also use side effect which is um, uh, more flexible. Uh, inside effort, you can uh, put a list of value so they are consumed every time the mock is called. For example, we see here five, four, uh, the list, five, four, three, and every time the mock is called, it returns a new item inside the list. Using side of the, you can also uh, give a uh, return an exception uh, from the the mock. For example, if you need to uh, to to prove an exception case. One limitation that it has is one special case. Uh, mocks when you call a property in a mock and the mock. Uh, doesn't have the property set uh, or the attribute uh, set, uh, you will see that it will create the attribute in runtime. 
So, for example, if you want uh, to create uh, the animal attribute, you will see that it is going to be created. But what if you uh, make one type or one little mistake in the name of the attribute inside the function or the code that the piece of code that you are going to test? Um, the te um, in this case, most ha uh, give you a false sense of security because you are going to. Uh, use an attribute that is created in real time, but in the real world, uh, yeah, when you use the real object, a real object doesn't create uh, attributes in, uh, in the past them and in the, when you need it. So to avoid this limitation, you can use specs. Uh, you can use the real object, the real classes, and you can use them as templates to your mocks. So the mocks has um, the mock has uh, the, the the list of attributes and limited to this. As, uh, <clears throat> so specs uh, here are going to see specs copy attributes from a real class to a mock and will uh, uh, give you an error and say you if you are accessing uh, an attribute that doesn't exist previously. Uh, you use this uh, using the create auto spec function. Uh, create auto spec uh, give you uh, the, the, the template from a function. For example, here you have a function that has Three attributes, three, three arguments, A, B, C. Uh, three attributes, the, 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 the attribute you, you need to, uh, three arguments, <laughs> sorry, uh, three arguments to, to, to use this. And when you create uh, the auto spec, you can see that when you use the mock, everything is going to be fine when you use the real. Uh, the, the correct number and type of attribute of arguments, but when you give wrong arguments to the function, you are you going to see that it's going to give you an error. So this helps uh, in, to ensure that testing uh, tests correctly and give an error when it has to. Okay. Mocken has another uh, another use uh, when you want just to wrap an, a real class an object, a real object in your code. For example, sometimes you want to call the real object, but you say, if I call the real object, why I will use a mock? Because in this case, mock is going to help you to record every call, every call to the function. Okay. Uh, mocks also uh, act like a recording uh, object. Every, every time your uh, code call a mock, uh, the mock uh, creates uh, that uh, structure that you can use to, uh, in, your, in your testing to make assertions. Assert caller, for example, uh, you can use it uh, to see when it was called. Assert caller once if it was called just one time or if it was never called. You can also see about how uh, you can also test the arguments of the calling uh, in, in the call function. For example, if it was called in a specific way, it was called just one time with a specific set of arguments. If we we'll, if we'll have any call with this specific famous argument, or if, ha if it has 
Some call this a specific set of arguments. You can even see the list of all the arguments uh, as a property of the model. Um, finally, I am going to explain two special uh, libraries that we use here to test, uh, uh, to test the use of APIs in um, web development. Okay. First, I am going to talk about VCR. VCR is a library that helps you to record in uh, a special files called cassettes. Um, every interaction with an external API with your, uh, your system that you, your system has. For example, you have two times in this uh, in this VCR library. One is when you have uh, the saving. The saving time is when you record the interaction and you have um, to the, um, you, you have to to use it with uh, VCR record argument. So you run your test and you are uh, using PyTest, for example, uh, is a, uh, VCR has a plugin to add to PyTest, and you run your test using an argument called VCR record. Uh, VCR record once or VCR record all. After that, you have a, uh, a set of special uh, files, a special text files that give you uh, all the interactions and you can use it to test uh, if the if your code asks for the same request and it gives your code the same re the same responses so you can uh, give uh, many, you have all the interaction the request and the response and after the, the request and the response and it tests if the request was the same, you can, set, you can say which attribute to test, the URL, the argument, and even the payload, and then it gives you the response and everything. So with this, uh, using this, uh, using this uh, special library, you, uh, you avoid to use an API and because using an external API uh, has a lot of trouble because sometimes the external system can be down, sometimes it can be expensive, sometimes it can be very slow. Uh, so you don't need, you, it's, it's not it's bad to be dependent to in every automation test to, to, to use an external API. And finally, uh, we have about a Moto. Moto is when you want to test using the Boto AWS Amazon Web Services uh, Boto library. Boto library is used to access all the services from uh, Amazon. Um, uh, sometimes, uh, as you know, uh, Amazon Cloud Service can be expensive and you don't want to change uh, things in real, uh, your real cloud service. Uh, so you can use just as a decorator in the test function and it will change uh, the real call uh, in the tested uh, object uh, with uh, mockup uh, calls uh, that are especially tailored uh, to to be like uh, boto uh, services. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so uh, finally, why we use mockers? Uh, we use mockers. 
because sometimes it's difficult or it's expensive or it's very slow or, some, or something like that using external APIs or external objects or hardware objects. Or sometimes we can use Moker also to just isolate, or just use, uh, test our, uh, some part of our code isolated from the rest of the system. Uh, how we use patch? Patch, we can use patch using uh, context, um, manager, decorators, or manually uh, uh, starting and stopping them. And we can, um, we, we, we have to be very aware of when we are going to start the, the, the patch and when we are going to stop. Uh, we, we need to uh, remember that it is uh, a change in the real, uh, in the real time, in the real run of the code. Uh, we can use a dependency injection. If we use dependency injection, we can avoid using patch. There are two kinds of simulators. One kind of simulator are stuff that are just a simplified uh, objects that we use all, only for testing and mocks that are special uh, object that uh, the standard library gives us uh, and have a lot of uh, interesting uh, characteristic features. Uh, and finally, I uh, explain bre briefly about two uh, libraries that are external that are not in the standard library you need to install from PyPy, for example. Uh, just uh, this year and uh, mod. And um, that's all. Thank you. You can follow me uh, in LinkedIn, uh, Twitter, or as Maria now in uh, GitHub. Thank you. Um, do we have any questions for uh, Maria? Thank you so much, Maria, for a brilliant talk. That was, uh, that was lovely. You. So do we have any questions from the room? All right, do we have any questions? Oh, uh, there's a question. Hello. Thanks for the talk. Uh, I have one question related with the uh, with, uh, APIs and how, how we can create a class that can be mocked uh, and, and patch uh, uh, an API class that performs a, like an interface to don't use a real API. And if the, if there is a standardized way to create a, a class that mocks those kind of classes. Or, uh, okay, le, le, let me explain again the, the question. Is, is there a standardized way to create a, a class that patches a real class using mock methods and using the assertions that those methods uh, let you. Okay, if you use a uh, external API, pro probably are you using request, response, and everything like that. Uh, so if you use an external API, I think it's a web API. If you use a web API, I uh, suggest you to use PCR because it works very well. I don't know if you are using a web API or uh, another kind of yes, yes, system. Yes, yes, web API. And about the BCR records, I have another question. And um, how do we, uh, how can we save those records and reuse it in, a, in say, AI, CD? Okay. Lines? Okay, I am going to explain a, li a little more about this. Um, you have to install VCR and Py, uh, if you use PyTest, uh, PyTest VCR. And after that, when you run your, uh, your, your uh, test in the first time, you can disable VCR if the, in this kind, in this, in this case, you use the real API or you can record in the VCR 
every uh, interaction. So when you, the test, uh, when your system, uh, because if the, in the test you call the function in the system, uh, it uh, creates a request, it records the request and records the response in a special uh, YAML um, text, uh, text file that is inside a cassette folder. Uh, do you understand? So we have in the cassette folder many different text files in YAML format that uh, record every interaction, every request your system do, and every response your system gets. Okay. After that, you say you just uh, say the PyTest to run normally, and in this case, the the, the decorator test with uh, the, the uh, add uh, add VCR uh, decorator are going to um, to use the YAML as the, as the source of <clears throat> true. Of, uh, of the real uh, information that came from the external system. Okay, they are using this information that was recorded in the first time as the source of uh, data. So, uh, so this have one little trade off because um, sometimes Maria, you need to just record thing. again the cast. Um, uh, hey Maria, we're 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 right on the time right now, and we have to break for coffee. Um, but maybe if it works, then um, the the person who has the question can maybe reach out to you via Twitter or LinkedIn if that works, and you can maybe uh, explain that. Okay, of course, don't worry. I have Telegram also, and Telegram. Awesome. In Telegram, I use the same user. Awesome. Th same Thank user you so much everywhere. for your time. Thank you so much for for okay. your time. This was lovely, lovely. Thank you so much.